for the next phase of natural logarithm, we study derivatives and antiderivatives. First, we need to make sure we understand how to use natural log and compositions. So, if I have natural log of x, the domain is just x greater than zero. So we add this to our list of items we need to consider, and we're finding the domain of a function. So, the items we have, first, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So if I have square root of box, box is greater than or equal to zero. Can't divide by zero. So if I have one over box, box has to be non-zero. We have our trig functions, like tangent and secant. And now we have natural log of box, which requires that box is greater than zero. Now, if you understand how to find a domain for something of type square root of box, pretty much understand what you need for natural log of box. So let's take a look at an example. So I want to find the domain y equal to natural log of x squared minus 4x. Take x squared minus 4x, that's what's in our box. So I'm going to take that, set it greater than 0. Since x squared minus 4x is a polynomial, it's continuous everywhere. So to find the regions where it's positive and negative, I just find the zeros, check one point in each region. So our zeros are 0 and 4. For a point in each region, we'll check minus 1, 1, and 5. So when you work those out, we'll have positive, negative, and positive. That means our domain is going to be x strictly less than 0, x strictly greater than 4. And we note, because we're using strictly greater than here, we're going to leave the endpoints out. Now, we want to rule for taking the derivative of a composition with natural log. So we'll need the chain rule. Recall, this says, if I take f composed with g, take the derivative, evaluate at x. The rule is, take the derivative of f times the derivative of g. Just have to evaluate at the right points. So we'll have f prime evaluated at g of x times g prime of x. Now, we we'll to apply this rule when we have f equal to natural log. So if I have f of box equal to natural log of box, then f prime of box is equal to 1 over box. If I take the derivative of natural log of g of x, then g of x is in the box. So for the derivative, we're just going to take 1 over g of x, multiply by the derivative of g. Then we need to be careful. Okay, so we'll have to have the restriction that g of x is greater than zero. Otherwise, our original function is not defined at x. Let's take a look at an example. So, we use y equal to natural log of x squared minus 4x. We note we've seen the domain is x less than zero, x greater than four. If I take the derivative, what's in the box is x squared minus 4x. So we'll have box prime over box. So we have x squared minus four in the denominator. The derivative, which is two x minus four, goes into the numerator. So that's our derivative. Note, we have to have x less than zero, x greater than four. For instance, this makes perfect sense as a function if I put a one in there. But note, we can't put a one into our original function. Here. We have a special case that we'll need for antiderivatives. So I have y equal to natural log of absolute value of x. How do we make sense of this? Absolute value of x is a piecewise defined function. So when x is greater than or equal to 0, I just return x. When x is negative, we we'll take away the minus sign. And we could do that by multiplying by minus 1. So that returns minus x. Now that means our function. When x is greater than 0, we get natural log of x. When x is less than 0, we're going to have natural log of minus x, because absolute value of x is then minus x. And if x is equal to 0, we get natural log of 0, but that's undefined. So our domain is going to be x not equal to 0. The way we should think of this, by taking the absolute value, 
We're extending the domain of natural log as much as we can. Now, if we take the derivative, how do we take the derivative of a piecewise defined function? Well, we're just gonna take the derivative on each piece, then we have to worry about what's happening at the endpoints. Now for the first piece, derivative of natural log is just one over x, so we record that. For our second piece, we're gonna need the chain rule. So derivative of natural log of minus x, we have minus x in the box. The rule is box prime over box. So we're gonna have minus one over minus x, or one over x again. So we have one over x when we're positive, one over x when we're negative. So I put all that together. The derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is one over x, and note the domain here is just gonna be x not equal to zero. Now, if we compare pictures, if I just consider natural log of x, that's just gonna be everything to the right of the y-axis. So here's our graph. The derivative is gonna be one over x with x greater than zero. Since this is increasing everywhere, that means our derivative is gonna be greater than or equal to zero, and that pans out. When I take the absolute value of x, put it in natural log, we're gonna add another piece. Everything to the left of the y-axis is gonna be natural log of minus x. Now, if we put minus x into a function, what we're doing is flipping over the y-axis. So our graph goes like this to this. We note the derivative is still gonna be one over x. Here, we're always decreasing on this piece. So we're gonna expect the derivative is always less than or equal to zero. And that's gonna pan out for one over x. Now, if we rework our derivative with the absolute value, we'll have that the derivative natural log of the absolute value of g of x is equal to g prime of x over g of x with a restriction that g of x is non-zero. So note, the expression is the same. The difference is we're now allowing negative values for g of x. So example, we'll now have y equals natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus 4x. I can put whatever I want here as long as what comes out is not equal to zero. So our domain is gonna be x squared minus four x not equal to zero, or x not equal to zero or four. When I take the derivative, the rule is just take what's in the box, take its derivative, divide by box. So we'll get the same expression as before. Two x minus four over x squared minus four x. The difference, we're now gonna allow x squared minus 4x to take on negative values. So our only restriction is that x not be equal to zero or four. Now note, I don't need to write this down because that'll be handled implicitly by the denominator. Let's look at another example. So I'll have y equals natural log, natural log of x. No absolute value. Now, for the domain, we just take what's on the inside, so it's natural log of x, we put it in the box, we set it greater than zero. So we wanna know for what x do we have natural log of x greater than zero. If we draw the picture, this is just asking what y values are positive. So we note that'll happen when x is greater than one. So the graph hits the x-axis at the point one comma zero. So everything to the right is gonna be x greater than one. We take the derivative, we're just gonna take what's in the box, flip it over, then multiply by its derivative. So I have one over natural log of x times one over x, or one over x times natural log of x with the restriction that x be greater than one. If we redo it with the absolute value, so we'll have y equal to natural log, of the absolute value of natural log of x. Now for what's in the box, we only want it to be non-zero. So I want natural log of x not equal to zero. That's just gonna mean we use the usual domain for natural log of x, which is x greater than zero, and I just throw away one. So we put a one in, we get a zero. So this is gonna be our new domain. Now, if I want the derivative, I don't need to do any new work. I'm allowed to just use this expression here, one over x natural log of x, 
But the restriction I use is that x be greater than zero and x not be equal to one.